Welcome to Barcelona for the final two races of the 2020 GT World Challenge Europe Sprint Cup. One race down, and that was a 1-2 for the Lamborghinis. We still have, on this most beautiful morning, plenty to play for. Eight teams can still take a tilt at the overall title. So, John Watson, joining me, Bruce Jones. It's a beautiful but chilly morning at Barcelona. Well, Bruce, look at that track temperature of 4.6 Celsius. Almost cold enough to scrape the ice off, but it is a gorgeous day in Barcelona. And hopefully, hopefully, it'll be a dry day as well. Yeah, certainly weather has been uh, a, something that really was hanging over the teams yesterday with rain blowing through, but this very much is a different day. We've got two 20-minute qualifying sessions to set the grids for today's two races. It really is quick fire when you've got three races held across two, two days. And for the Belgian Audi Club, Team WRT, they're very keen to get out onto the track. It's going to be very, very cold, though, John. So mistakes could be coming for those that aren't paying attention to just how cold it is. Dries van Tor still leads the title with his title race on 65 points with his teammate Charles Wiertz, but they're only five points clear now of Mauro Engel and Lucas Stoltz. 35 points to play for. That's why we've got eight driver combinations that could take a tilt at the title. And Timo Bogoslajski sharing with Raffaele Marcello. is ranked third in the championship at the moment, so he's very, very much at the sharp end. Yes, and we saw yesterday the car brand that dominated were the two Emilia Frey racing Lamborghinis, and they just literally sprinted off, disappeared from the rest of the field, and that was a battle between the Mercedes and the Audis, and at one point you almost felt they were about to trip over one another, but they got to the finish line and took their position. But now it looks to me as if it's going to be a beautiful day all the way through, so that's one factor we can discount. It will now be done simply to the teams in the pit lane, the drivers on the circuit, they have to behave. It's now or never. This championship is going to be won and lost, particularly into turn one on the opening lap of both the, the race two and then race three later this afternoon. Yeah, and as we've seen over the years, over the decades here at the Circuit de Catalunya, qualifying is almost as important as it is at Monaco. Very, very difficult first combination of corners. But uh, we saw lots of tight racing yesterday, but get yourself up at the front of the queue and you've really got a smile in your face. I mean, it's a, it's a difficult circuit to overtake on. We all know that. It's a circuit that changes dramatically in terms of the level of grip you get. Now, this time of day, it's just coming up to 9 o'clock in the morning in Barcelona. By the time we get to the first race, which is run midday, usually early afternoon, the track will be totally different. So teams, it's almost like they have to roll the dice. They have to anticipate what they can expect rather than have a constant across the entire day. Listed as a wet track, a, a track that doesn't look wet, but obviously lights on is the order. Just saw there Simon Gachet and Stephen Pellet, the Santelot Racing Audi. That's leading the Silver Cup class, has taken an overall win, but that's actually sitting on quite a tidy pile of points advantage. At the moment, they're sitting on an advantage of um, 25 points. There are only 35 points to play for. They've just got to keep on doing what they're doing to maybe take that title. But we've seen, as yesterday, uh, many a slip between cup and lift, John. Yes, they did. They had a, a, a misfortune. Round turn 12, turning into turn 12, the latter part of it's a long right-hand corner. Uh, when went for the brake pedal, the ABS appeared to fail, which caused the front brakes to lock up. The car went off track, had light contact with the Tech Pro barriers, but there was a certain amount of damage done to the bodywork, so the team had to strip that all away. Then they had to check behind that to make sure that radiators, hose connections, then going to the more structural parts of the front of the car, that there was no damage to that or to the suspension, the steering, whatever. They lost about an hour in that one and a half, one hour, 20 minute session, got out a few minutes before the end, played catch up pretty much, but because they had such an advantage in their category, it didn't harm them particularly, but it was a starting on the wrong foot. Well, the team that's running second in the Silver Cup is this one, Mad Panda Motorsport. John and I really like this team, just simply because it's such a wacky combo. But Ezekiel Perez, Compeng, and Axel Jeffries, they're the crew. They're at 25 points down, so they've got to keep just chipping away in there. Just heard some news that, uh, sadly, it seems the 107 Bentley from Classic and Modern Racing, Jules Gunor, Nelson Panciatici, pulled off just before the end of the race. Just they fire in the engine bay, and the damage has been too much to continue. I presume that is for both races today. One would assume that if they're not out to be qualifying now for, for race two, it would be unlikely they would do Q3 because Q3 is going to follow directly after Q2. So what the assumption we have, we have to make is that 
with great regret, the 107 the CMR Racing Bentley will not be taking part in the Sandra today's uh, two races. Yeah, sad because it's always had a great cameo role. So, 20 crews coming out and they're going to find very, very little grip. There was little grip at certain points yesterday because the track was so wet. But look at the sunshine today. What a fillet. This is the sort of the tonic the teams need. Yeah, it's still been declared a wet track. Uh, but I think that everybody will have gone out on a set of slicks. There may be a, a residue of some of the moisture from yesterday. There was a lot of heavy rain at different parts during the day. But fundamentally, uh, I would think most drivers and teams will have opted. There you can see going through turns seven and eight. There's a very clear dry line there. They're up the hill. The track there you can see is dry. It's maybe in places where there are shadows on the racetrack that those are the areas where there's still effectively damp on the circuit. So it's been declared wet. You can choose whatever tile you want to choose. Right, just to reiterate, these are two 20-minute qualifying sessions to set the grid for race two and race three. There's a 10-minute gap between them. That's the shortest 10 minutes most of these teams can ever experience unless they've got a, a car that's limping to the finish of a race. Track conditions, cool weather getting warmer, but it's about, at the moment, it takes several laps to get heat into your tyres, most notably on a chilly morning like this. Give yourself track space, guys. This is qualifying. You're still seeing some of the cars bunching up next to each other. I'm well, just watching the 163 ML Frey Racing. Uh, Giacomo Altoe and Albert Costa, the winners from yesterday's one-hour race one. And uh, it was a gifted race in the fairness because the sister car, the 14, had the lead. But within the team, they decided it was more important to let the 163 win. Albert Costa, of course, being a Barcelona resident, down in turn one. A little bit tentative on the brakes. So again, just the sense of how much grip am I going to have? Do I nail the brake on the first lap? The, 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 you've got to put energy into the tyres to get the tyre to work, get the temperature up. But if you aren't getting good feelings coming from that, then you are tentative. So there we go. Coming up into turn four. So fastest sector one, not on surprisingly. Alpha Costa. And these two Emil Frey racing Lamborghinis really, really, once they got hold of the, the race, they just disappeared after the set of the, of the pit stop. They came out 1-2, and that was it, effectively, race, victory, and second place in the podium was a done deal. Yeah, I mean, effectively, their speed down the start finish straight was fantastic, but again, if someone came out of it, I think it's a problem, because the corner before being that chicane, it meant they got out, and they're super sleek in the straight line, but Mercedes just couldn't keep up, and the Audis were sort of hanging on a little bit further back. There's, there's the, the complete package for the Lamborghini uh, is here, working very well. I don't know whether there would have been any change in the balance of performance for race two and race three. I don't know whether that's been uh, something that's been considered or not. Look at the difficulty you've got, the way that the light, the contrast, you know, that's not easy. You're turning into turn 12 and all of a sudden it virtually goes into a whiteout. The sun's still so low in the sky at this time of year, getting into autumnal weather patterns. Again, out of turn 15, just hits you as when he's diving into the pit lane now, in case anybody thought he'd gone off track. So Albert Costa decided to bail, having set fastest first and second sector times. So no proper times on the board as yet. Majority of the teams have been in and out of the pits. That side to that, yes, it really is cold. You were quite right. What can we do about tyre pressures? Stay out there. Oscar Tuncho uh, has been going better and better with Yusuf Ohaka. They're running in the, in the Silver Cup class. And... Um, Really, really making great strides for Top Sport WRT. But uh, yes, fresh set of rubber all around. We've done the side to that. We've gauged what we need. That's the, the mighty rumble of that Top Sport WRT Mercedes. Presses on. The others all putting new rubber on the car. Right, Maro Engel, top of the charts, 1 minute 54.07. But to show how quickly that will change, now Oscar Tunjo's done a 1 minute 50.7. We need times about four or five seconds yeah. faster than this. I mean, pull time for Q1 was 145.5 plus a few hundredths of a second. So there's still a lot of time left in both the racetrack and in the car. So look at Raffaele Marcello in our personal best first and second sector as he comes through turn 16 and what will his time relate to it's mercedes first and second and third in fact and fourth and well where's the 88 time have we got a time up for 88 we haven't seen that time come up yet so it's gone second quick as i beg your pardon so 150.9 against the 150.7 so track still 
in an evolutionary in an evolutionary phase. So again, Oscar Tunjo, the Colombian, pressing on, running fifth in the Silver Cup class. Still has a chance for the title, but very much an outside one. There are 35 points to play for, and they're 33, po 33 points down on Gachet and Palet. But uh, really for them, it's about ending the season in style. And for Toxport WRT, it's been their toe in the water this year, the GT World Challenge. And I'd say they've made a pretty good impression. I think they've done extremely well. And we're going to look 1.5 seconds up in Sector 2. So this is the beginning of a, a run he might do another couple of laps beyond this but certainly right now he's on route to consolidate his current fastest lap of the circuit currently that's a 150.7 which wouldn't even get you into the race in reality but uh, this is going to be somewhere in the 148s I would assume if he can maintain the momentum he's done a good job coming through turn 15 dial on to turn 16 clean exit doesn't overrun on the exit of the corner, goes across the line, and that's a 148.7. So, good job. Again, very cautious over the curbs on the exit of the final corner. They're just not wanting to go out. The track has a little more heat in it than the curbs do. The curbs have got the paints, and certainly all drivers understand after a coolish night in awesome, stay off the curbs. They are very, very slippery. Mikio Grenier handed victory yesterday to his teammate Albert Kostman. This weekend, racing the Silver Cup class with his new young teammate, Ricardo Feller, who he shares the car with in the course of the endurance rounds. And uh, they therefore pulled aside on the main straight. Uh, he handed victory to Albert Costa on home ground. Snaked home behind him, about a tenth of a second down at the finish. But uh, looking for double glory again today. And at the moment, uh, Lamborghinis, like many others, still waiting to lay a quick time on the board. Grenier down in 14th. Hasn't done a proper flying lap yet, but uh, obviously will be doing so but the clock keeps counting down John we've lost eight of the seven and a half of the minutes already so it's going towards the sharp end yeah we're getting down to the point where drivers have done an out lap they come in have a little look at the make sure everything is as it should be after the car has been prepared overnight and of course the opening laps on a racetrack that has not seen any action since the end of Saturday evening it needs to be it's almost has to be reborn and uh, the track surface, albeit dry in some parts and maybe slightly damp in other parts, it needs racing cars and racing rubber to be laid down for the track to then come to the drivers. Matteo Drudi is an example in the 55 attempt to Audi, fastest overall sector one, personal best in sector two. So we're probably going to see an Audi pop up there into the top three. Third place, actually, at the minute, is the second of the Silver Cup cars. That's the Tech World Racing Lexus, Aurelian Panis. So the Lexus is back up at the front at this phase, whether it will stay there or not is another matter. But Matteo Drudi is currently sixth, coming up to complete what will be his fifth lap, or the car's fifth lap, but it'll probably be Drudi's lap because he's in the car for this session. So watch and see where the Italian goes to Matteo Drudi. Second. There he goes. So another driver in the low, 1 minute 48. So they're going to have to go better than that. The times will keep on falling. So Oscar Tunjo just lowered the target to 1 minute 48.017. Two tenths of a second clear of Matthias Drudy. But what we saw yesterday, John, was uh, in qualifying in particular, the Lamborghinis and the Mercedes looked pretty handy, but the Audis seemed to struggle. In race form, the Audis seemed absolutely fine. But for Charles Wirtz and uh, Dries Van Tor leading the championship, they really, really need to wring everything out out of their Audi in, in these two qualifying sessions this morning. Well, certainly, the 32 Audi had the support of the entire Audi family because they're all lined up, queued up behind them. None of them dared overtake because it was against the interests of any one of those other drivers to do so. It was imperative that the 32 Audi, Dries van Thor and, and Charles Betts, maximised the best they could. I think they finished fifth overall. They had to score maximum points from that position. And uh, all the others, Kelvin van der Linde and the rest, lined up behind, just waiting, waiting, waiting. Well, to see Eddie Cheever go top in Pro-Am, it had been fleetingly Phil Keen in the ERC Sport Mercedes, but very good time from the Tempesta Ferrari there into the top ten, into ninth place for Cheever. That car has been other than the one error that Chris Froggart made into turn five, and it looks as if it was. He locked a brake, just hit the brake, the rear snatched and put him into the gravel. A very disappointing end to what has been so far this year, a pretty impressive run by both Chris Froggart and Eddie Cheever the third. But Matteo Drudi would appear to be on course to put his 55 attempt to Wadi into provisional 
full position. Well, Fred Rabisha just done it in the sister car. And Matteo Drudy, we're waiting to see where... Yes, Tom. Up. It's a slight slow delay, and he came onto the screen. 47.225 for Matteo Drudy. Yeah, that's more He like really it. deserves. I think he's raced really well this year, but hasn't just picked up the results for Tempto Racing. He'd have expected. Got a third place in the third of the three races at Misano, but since then it hasn't been all glory. So maybe this is the chance for the team with a pretty sort of plainly livery Audis to it's put one on the board. It's a stealth livery. It is. I've never noticed it before. You can actually buy that. If you really want to have a stealth road-going Audi A8, you can have it. But um, that's the colour scheme that attempt to racing have got. They were first and second quick as now. Albert Costa's popped up at the second place. Maro Engel and the Mercedes is up to third. Fred Beach, who had been second in the space of coming out of turn 16, blink of an eye, all of a sudden it down, down to fourth. But it's uh, Michael Grenier right now is the car in the 14 Lamborghini that has got a purple in sector one, personal best in sector two as we look at the 32. And this is uh, Dries Van Thor. And I mean, if anybody's going to get a time out of an Audi, we always say it, there's always going to be Dries Van Thor saying it and having it actually materialise. But this is the car that potentially could go quickest overall with eight minutes of the session remaining. Mikhail Grenier, the Canadian in the number 14, Lamborghini, and we're waiting for the timing and, and scoring. It is. Hit. So they're first and third, the Lamborghinis, with Matai and Drudy in between them. Still nobody down it, even into the one minute 46. That's a clear indication of just how cold this circuit is this morning. So let's just refresh. It's Mikhail Grenier just fleetingly at the top from Matteo Drudy, Albert Costa in the second of the Lamborghinis in third place. Top Mercedes is Mauro Engel in fourth. Championship leader Dries Van Tor improving as he goes around. Fastest of all in the first sector, but he's still down in sixth place. But the times now they're starting to come down, but only by small increments. I think, I think simply just having to stay out and do laps just to build that temperature. Fastest in first and second overall. Certainly coming through turn seven and eight and out of turn ten. There ain't anything left on the plate. He is ringing every thing that is possible to get out of his WRT entered out here, out to the very edge of the racetrack now into the sort of slightly weird turn 13 you've got to be careful not to overrun then 14 to the left 15 to the right runs the sausage curb at the exit then into turn 16 on to start finish straight this should see the 32 Audi go provisionally quickest. That's where they want that car to be. I think third dropped to four tenths of a second. Well, no, but while you were saying that, suddenly Matai Drudy and Albert Costa got into the 46s. Now Dries Van Tor also into the 46s, but the target keeps on moving. But Drudy doing a fantastic job. He's three tenths of a second to the good over Costa. The clock counts down. Six and a half minutes remain. Well, at least we got them into the 46s. I don't think we're going to see a 45. But looking at that lap for Dries Van Tor, the car was absolutely moving around under him. I mean, he, he, was nothing, I mean, he was literally couldn't get any more from the car. You could see it in the first sector, Tony saw it in the final sector. So right now, Matteo Drudy provisionally in the attempt to on a 146.5. The 14 Lamborghini we're looking at it coming down is second quickest. 48 hundredths of a second behind. Third is Albert Costa in the sister Lamborghini. So Albert Costa on, I'd say, generously gifted the victory, the 163 gifted that victory. A nice gesture for the Spanish-based, or Spanish national based in Barcelona, Catalonia. So he was delighted with his success. He said, I can't celebrate it because we're all in a form of lockdown. So he dives into the pit lane as well with five minutes remaining. But the car on position, purple, purple, Dries Van Thor keeps going, keeps just driving the wheels off his car. That first sector time is fantastic, nearly half a second to the good Absolute, on anyone else. Absolutely. And you think about the format of that first sector, it's very, very technical. He's really throwing it at the wall. So easy here in this last sector of the racetrack to lose it, particularly through turns 14 and 15. There is a slow left right chicane. It's a clumsy chicane into turn 16, a beautiful entry, even nicer exit. So comes across the line. Will this be a low 146? of 146.387. So he's cleared by just two tenths of a second from Matai Drudy. So the Audi's coming good on the cooler track this morning. Calvin okay. Madalinda, the sister car. Currently fifth, not yet in the one minute 46. Is only four drivers are. Dries Van Tor, Matai Drudy, the two Lamborghinis of Grenier and Albert Costa. Will the South African van der Linde join them? Looking very, very fleet of foot at the moment. His best at 1 minute 47.1. He goes top, 1 minute 46.3. That wasn't in the script. But 
essentially what, what is going to happen this afternoon. All the WRT team cars and the rest of the Audi family have got to gather around and support the 32. Right now, 32 is on the front row of the grid, but not in pole position. Then directly behind you got Matteo Drudi in the attempt row. Then the first of the Lamborghinis, fourth. Second of the Lamborghinis, fifth. Then another Audi, Yusuf Uwega. Where is the number four, Barrow Engel? Only ninth, the principal challenger. OK, and a driver in 15th place at the moment has banged in his best first sector and the best middle sector of all, but didn't complete it in the end. Oscar Tunjo, I suddenly thought he'd... Remember, he was out early Absolutely. on and doing his magic, and it, yeah. it just he got it all wrong at the end of the lap, unfortunately, for him. But we'll watch to see if there's a cameo roll. But suddenly, the Audis are finding form on the cooler track today. Fred Ravish, personal best, first and second sector, currently running in 12th position in the second of the attempt to racing Audis. So this will see an improvement for current 12th position, whether it takes him into the top six. Difficult to judge, just seeing the middle sector time certainly a reasonable gain on previously so Fred Bavish weaving his way through the final sector of this racetrack 12th position as it stands comes across start finish line wow where did that come from third third well what we had Dries van Torg going back ahead of Kelvin van der Linden those two two very similar looking WRT Audis black with the gray and white flashes on them but uh, now we've got a tempo into third place ahead of a tento in fourth place. So it's Audi, 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 looking for a bit of a quick lap. I'll tell you who'll give it, this man. Yeah, I was Maro just going to say, Maro, where are all the Mercedes? Maro Engel, currently 11th. Well, yeah, it's, it's, it's changing all the time. So Maro Engel down to 12th, timing and scoring in the screen. But this Look who is second, though. Phil Keane has put a Mercedes second phenomenal. from nowhere. Pro-Am class, Phil Keane, half a second down on Kelvin van der Linde, who's just gone ahead of Dries van Tor again. This is going to carry on flip-flopping. What is Maro Engel's role going to be in this? Down in 13th, time on the board. He's lost the three. He's gone to first. 145.5, more or less to a hundredth of a second, equals the pole time from Q1 yesterday. And if anybody's thrown a spanner in the works, it's Maro Engel because he has put that car onto the front row of the grid. Dries van Thor is all the way down in the third row of the grid in the space of what little over two minutes gone from being quickest down to the third row of the grid. The last thing Dries van Thor needs, WRT Audi need, is for that HRT, the principal challenger to the 32 Audi. We're on board right now with Dries van Thor. That's into turn fun. 14, into 15. So whether he can make up, he's lost three tenths of a second in the middle sector. That's a shared little time to make up, particularly when your principal competitor is on provisional pole. OK, he crosses the line. He doesn't improve. He's down in seventh place now because a few other cameo roles have come, come in. Raffaele Marcello has woken up. The coffee has kicked in. He's gone top for Aka ASP. We've got Oscar Tunjo. I said he was back for another fling. He's ahead of Dries Fatal. Drivers he doesn't expect ahead of him are at the moment. And Phil Keane is also up the front in the top ten. But Dries Fatal, championship leader, down in ninth position at the moment. He's got effectively may just squeeze in this lap and one more. It's going to be very tight. He's definitely got this lap to play with. A great lap by Raffaele Marcello. We saw him do a 144.9 in pre-qualifying on Saturday. Didn't get anywhere near it in qualifying formal for, for race one. But he's put that man again in sector one. Gone purple. We're looking at number uh, two, Oscar Tunio, currently in seventh position. Perm green, green. So he should see some improvement, but where he's going to end up, wait and see. But it's changing so, so quickly. The top car in the silver class actually is a William Panis in the Tech One Racing Lexus. Will that be improved upon by Top Sport? Yes, Top Sport WRT. Oscar Tonjo back up into fifth place. But all eyes in what is happening for Dries Van Tor at the moment. His teammate Kelvin van der Linde is in fourth, but Dries is suddenly down in 12th position on it's changing so fast. Raffaele Marcello. So it's almost a net net situation for the Italian. He was purple in sector one. Now Albert Koss has gone purple in sector one in the number 163 Lamborghini, currently second quickest overall. So Raffaele Marcello's provisional pull with what? Checkered flag out. This is his last lap, he can't do any more. Coming across start finish line, he gets fastest overall sector in sector three of 144.089. Oh, 144.940, sorry. Waiting to see Albert Costa, the one 
car on track now that can challenge for pole position. Well, this was important when I last looked at the screen. Dries Van Tor had fallen to 13th place. He just moved up to fifth. But while he's doing that, he's suddenly falling down the order again as the other drivers are coming across the start finish line. It's at the moment Marcello from Albert Costa. Albert hasn't finished his lap though. Here he comes. He could go to the top which would make it four Sprint Cup pole positions in a row for the Lamborghini team. But at the moment, it's still Raffaele Marcello hanging on by three tenths of a second. But as long as Albert Costa doesn't muck it up through the final corner, he hasn't. He comes onto the start, finish straight. He will be going top. He One goes 44.8 point, 62 thousandths is that close. Oh, I tell you, I mean, in a session like this where the track is improving literally by your lap, you've got to be on the track at the latest possible moment to try and benefit because if you're the first car to take the checkered flag i'll guarantee you the last car in this session to take the checkered flag will probably outpace you well just at the moment we've got the two attempto audis in fourth and fifth third and fourth positions kelvin van der linde sixth in his audi and therese van Tour, championship leader though he improved on his final lap down in seventh have we had everyone to the finish or are we still looking at a Finishing off a lap from the second of the Lamborghinis, Emil Fry Racing, Michael Grenier, car number 14. Yeah, they're going to finish this lap. They're still personal best sector one, uh, not a brilliant middle sector, but it is Albert Costa who has done the biz and put that car onto pole position. Coming in, having completed his run, we're still waiting for the the 14. To, well, the 14 has not taken the checkered flag as well, but they're starting back in 11th position, which is significantly different to where they were yesterday and in and among all of that uh, the pro-am poll went to eddie chiva ninth overall that's really strong good Just effort ahead. very good effort. tech one lexus so the top car in the silver cup class oscar Tordio deserved that he really pressed on through that session the top sport wrt i mean so a bit of head scratching but again it's so difficult on a track that where it's changing so so quickly let's take a look at those times and albert costa came out on top by 62 thousandths of a second from in his lamborghini from rafa marcello in the aka asp mercedes and then it was really good good news for the attempt to audi team fred bavish and Matthias drudy will fill the second row Maro Engel looked good potentially for pole but in the end ended up in fifth position for hrt kelvin van der linde always was in the fight. Dries Van Tor likewise, they had turns at the top of the qualifying table, but that was about three minutes before the end of the session. They ended up sixth and the championship leader in seventh. Oscar Tonio, top car in the Silver Cup class for the Top Sport WRT in eight. And then look at that great run from Eddie Chiba to be ninth to be the top pro run pro -am runner. Just ahead of Aurelion Panis getting that Nexus singing down the straight. But there were other cars that coulda, shoulda, but aren't at the top of the table. It was a really, really tricky session as the track was cold, started warming up at the quickest times were the last times over the line. But Albert Costa took the bragging rights yesterday with the first win of the three races here and now has made it four wins, four poles in succession for Emil Fry Racing and its Lamborghinis. An interesting grid. You've got the championship leader, 32 Audi, in seventh place in the grid. That's the fourth row of the grid. You've got principal challenger, Maro Engel, and the HRT Mercedes, third row of the grid. And there are Audis, attempt to Audis ahead of Maro Engel. And there's a couple of, including Dries Van Thor, WRT Audis behind Maro Engel. He is, if you like, the Mercedes and the Audi meet in the Audi sandwich. Well, he wanted a role in the championship. He certainly put himself right in the position to have one. Well, he it wouldn't want to be a sausage in this case, that's for sure. No, the thing here is, of course, that uh, what we have is the Emil Fry Racing crews just working their way up the championship table but the real battle at the top is just five points difference between the, the pairing of Vantor and Vietz in their WRT Audi and Engel and Stoltz in their HRT Mercedes and as long as they have sight of each other they can really sort of control their relative point scores. Looking down timing and scoring two results which slightly maybe disappointing one is 13th place Christopher Hasse and Santa Lock Racing Audi number 25 and a little bit further down Another Audi, that sister car, the Santa Lock Racing for Simon Gachet. This is in the Silver Cup, of course. The Christopher Hasse car is an overall or a pro car. But Christopher Hasse normally would be at what I would call the front of the grid. And we've seen outstanding performance from the Silver Cup, Audi, Gachet and Palette. So by that style in 16th place, that's what fourth of the Silver Cup cars. That They will be disappointed with that, albeit they've got a relatively comfortable advantage in their championship, in the Silver Cup championship.
But I think any team, any set of drivers, they just grab each race, take it at a time. I know we're at the sharp end of the championship, but uh, really trying to get close to the front was the aim. But now, while we're sitting in the pits for this 10-minute break, the track continues to lose its chill, lose its cold edge, and that will be kinder. But certainly the, the way those tyres tumbled through the session, John, it just showed when you're racing in autumn, you've got a more of a cliff to climb. Yeah, I mean, it's just an evolution of the circuit. Literally, in the 20 minutes, it changed probably quite a lot. When you went out, or everybody went out, when the track went green, it was effectively a green racetrack. Not a huge amount of grip. A lot of, or a lack of feel and uh, certainly confidence coming through. Essentially, you have to try and just stay out, look for clear laps, build up temperature, but it's something that every easy to say, but not easy to carry out. Well, Giacomo Alto has taken the first pole. He's staying in the car. Let's hit Giacomo Alto in the pits. Giacomo, four pole positions in a row for Lamborghini. And certainly as the session went on, the track seemed to get quicker. Yeah, the track is improving uh, lap by lap. Uh, for sure, Albert did an unbelievable job. Uh, he could improve on the last, uh, on the very last lap, and then uh, he did the pole position. I'm so happy for the team and for Lamborghini. So we keep pushing, and then we see for quality two what we can achieve. Well, certainly, this is a home circuit for Albert. He knows every corner, every opportunity to overtake. Yeah, exactly. He is the king here in Barcelona, so I'm sure he can do. He will do the maximum he can to to do uh, the best result possible. Thank you, Giacomo. Thank you. So the best place to be is on pole position. The drivers staying on board. No swapping between those two sessions. This 10-minute break will be over very soon indeed. Now, what will Mauro Engel be able to do this time around? Of course, a lot of them treating it as... See what, don't make a mistake in qualifying one. Qualify as well as you can. Now, really, you can hang it out in qualifying session number two. They've seen what the target time is. 1 minute 44.8. That won't be enough, I think, this time around. The track will be just marginally quicker. The drivers will be more attuned to the situation. But what's the betting? Would anything other than Lamborghini take pole? It was only by 62 thousandths of a second over the best of the Mercedes, though, and Rafa Marcello will be girding, ready to go out again, John. Well, we, we know he's got the new streamlined, lightweight haircut. Uh, whether that makes any difference or not, or psychologically, it might make him feel more Darth Vaderish than he normally does. But, I mean, the level of talent that Marcello has got is, I mean, it's, it's, it's let's say, stellar. But Albert Costa, somebody who for many years has sort of been flying under the radar, but we've always known has pace, never find himself consistently in a car worthy of his talent. Certainly he now has that car and he's displaying that talent. Yes, and as he said yesterday, what a shame. It's, you know, we're, we're so excited we've been able to race through 2020, but he would have loved his friends and family and a crowd there to cheer him yesterday. And these things, you know, he'll look back over his career later and go, it was a shame, but it wasn't the end. Listen, what he wanted to do was go down into Barcelona, down to Los Ramblos, have a blowout meal with the mum and the dad and the sister and the granny and the granddad and whatever, and celebrate. But it isn't possible in the current health situation. So the CMR Bentley didn't have the best of runs. Hugo Chevalier, the only Bentley driver out this morning because the sister car, unfortunately, had an engine fire about three laps before the end of yesterday's race. That is hors de combat, but only 20th out of the 20 runners for Hugo there. 1 minute 47.7, so it's a long way. That's 2.9 seconds off the pace. I mean, whether it's a technical issue or whether it's just simply a matter of, of confidence. I mean, if you haven't got confidence because what you're getting through the seat of your pants, through the steering wheel, through the pedals, is, or in the case of you know, paddle gear changes, I don't know if you get it through the paddle gear change, in the old style stick shift, you know, all, the, all that sort of analog style of racing doesn't really exist these days. Nevertheless, it's about confidence. If you haven't got that confidence, there is a little thing in your little tick in your brain that says, do not press the throttle pedal until you're certain that there is grip there. So let's just run down in, in the various classes of course silver cup class the top qualifier in eighth place overall was oscar tunio the top in pram was one place behind in ninth and that was eddie Cheever doing a really really good job so one minute to go and the cars will be back on the track the drivers marginally older by 10 15 minutes but a lot wiser one feels after sussing those situations what the track conditions were Dominic Bauman going out to see what he can do in the prime class for SPS Automotive Performance. 
that was a car that ended up ended up slightly damaged at the end of yesterday's race. The last lap sought out for them, but the intent is clear from Belgian Audi Club Team WRT. Get out onto the circuit early on. There is the Sky Tempesta Racing Ferrari that leads the Pro-Am class. And uh, it's been just, as you said, that little slip up yesterday or whatever went on to leave Chris Froggart in the gravel at Turn 5 had been sitting on top of that class. Handed victory in many ways to AF Corsa, but keeps the championship a bit more exciting. And I, I think that little error illustrated just how fine the margins are between having grip and the car looking in control and, and doing what you want. And all of a sudden, once it's gone, there is no recovery. So when you get low levels of track temperatures we had yesterday, we also had a lot of rain at different points in the day, but in the race itself, it was a dry race, but it, nonetheless, track temperature was low. And just one little slip, or maybe a little bit too much aggression on the brake pedal, caught the rear wheel, caused the car to slide sideways, and once it was in that yaw position, it just slid, almost as if it was on ice, into the gravel bed, and there it stayed for a lap before it could be recovered. It finished the race, but of course it finished last. But in its category, that was all that really mattered. Overall positions were not the key. It was where it would finish in its respective category. Well, someone who, who's uh, fitting that bill as well, running the Silver Cup class. We saw his car at a standstill in the pits. Hugo Chevalier, he's racing in Silver Cup class in that dark blue Bentley, which I think looks absolutely fabulous in that in that livery. He's clearly going out to use all 20 minutes of this session, following Kelvin van der Linde around them. They would have appraised the situation, the conditions in that first session. Tail wanted to work a little way round on the, the Bentley. That's such a fiddly corner, John, that, that chicane, turns 14 and 15. It's, it's what I would call unfulfilling as a driver, because you, you, the only way you can challenge it is by being aggressive, attacking, attacking the curbs. But that in itself isn't always the most effective way of doing it. On board, Kelvin Lederlinde down into turn one. Then traffic just ahead stays. And that's the Mad Panda. Keep saying it, Mad Panda, Mad Panda, Mad Panda. Sounds great. Anyway, into turn three for Kelvin Lederlinde. Able to keep the throttle open all the way through. So he's got the grip, therefore the confidence to do so. Then back down the gears. I think he's down the second gear. Just the light, so much backlight. Then the short run. This is where we saw the, the Ferrari, the, the Sky Tempesta Ferrari, just slide wide into the gravel on the outside. It's an awkward corner at the best of times. It's funny camber. But Kelvin van der Linde, obviously a pro driver in the 31 Audi, which is a pro entry. Aggressive through turn eight. But that's Kelvin. He's an attacking driver. Has to give it a big breathe coming through turn nine. Wasn't confident enough just to try and get through there on a wing and a prayer and balance it on the throttle and steering. Still currently quickest overall in sector two. But he's essentially the first driver out there of the potential you know, front row or certainly front rows of the grid. So one would assume if he gets through turn 13 cleanly, which he has now this sort of say, um, fulfilling 14 and then 15. He has to wait, wait, wait before he can get on the power. So will Kelvin and Linda go provisionally quickest? One would assume with first and second purple, he should go. He does, then data 140. A good lap, 145.28. An opening lap, that's pretty impressive. That, that really is, John. We saw in the first qualifying session just effectively half an hour ago, it took a lot of the drivers 15 minutes to get down into the 1 minute 45s. It almost looked unlikely. Interestingly, Hugo Chevalier in the 108 Bentley is currently provisionally second quickest okay six tenths of a second away from kelvin van der linde but nevertheless it's just nice even at some point in a 20 minute session to see your name at the top of the field not at the tail of the field aurelian panis coming through in the lexus what's he got oh he's gone quickest bruce has what's got, happened well the track's getting faster just to point out that ugo chevalier is about two seconds faster than he was in that first session so i think there was some little problem but albert costa he's probably going to put his name at the top of the charts yes he does oh what would it 45 4.05 ladies and gentlemen that has been an sensational that is lap. eight tenths quicker eight tenths quicker than pole position for q2 for so where have, have look at the look at the Bentley? You just saw the Bentley coming through turn nine. The very top of the Chevalier is honoured. Certainly the image of the Bentley coming through the corner, fantastic.
But that lap from Albert Cossa, that was the outlap, one flying lap. He's eight tenths quicker than the times they worked down to. This track is getting warmer, the that cold edge has gone away. But I think that was an exceptional lap. And he's going faster than on this lap. Why not? So maybe we're going to see a high one minute 43. Blown the doors off the rest of the competition. Matteo Grudy, second quickest presently in the attempt to racing Audi. The Lexus, which had just gone quickest, it's a silver cup car, remember, is down into third. No, it's down into fourth because Kelvin Lander Linda has gone up to third. Very, very close to second place, but Matai Drudy still waving the flag. But on the basis, the track is improving all time. Surely the fastest times are going to come in about 12 minutes' time, 13 minutes' time on the final run. But that lap from Albert Costa, I can't get over how good that was because that was the first flyer and obviously so confident. Caution thrown to the wind, nailed it. Yeah. He had to make his way around the Ferrari step. The Ferrari stepped well out of the way to let Costa go through. So there will be a level of compromise in this lap. This is the fourth lap for Costa in this Q3. So is, is he going to go into the pits? No, he's going to stay out and continue. Whether it can consolidate anything or not out of this, let's see what he can do. 144 053. He, he is three one thousandths yes, of a second amazing, below. Amazing. I mean, he lost time. I mean, what would that lap have been if it had been a clean lap? It would have been a 143 something or other. Matteo Drudy still running second. Kelvin Melinda third. So Dries van Thor, big ask for the young Belgian to try and drag the 32 ID up to somewhere respectable. Currently, well, it doesn't really matter. It's down in the 17th position. Well, it's, irre it's irrelevant at this stage because he's going to go into the top six pretty comfortably, if not even higher. Yeah, but clearly the way that uh, Team WRT are playing this one is make sure that Kelp for the Dries is out there at the very end of the session when the track is fastest. Well, he's got not into the top comfortably ten. Comfortably into the top six. Double that. Twelve. Okay. That was a shock. Everything is pegged according to where is the HRT. Mauro Engel driven Mercedes, that is the chief championship rival. I'll come on to another point in a second, but Mauro, yet like Dries Van Tor, late into the session in many ways, he's going to be there right at the end. He hasn't got a time on the board yet, but the important thing is where he completes this lap, through turn 11, into turn 12, all looking neat and tidy, but how good's the time? Not, I don't think turn 10 was stellar. His personal best, first and second. I think turn 10 could have been... Uh, Executed slightly better. I don't want to criticise him, but I think he lost time there. Well, just before he gets out of the chicane, fastest first section of anyone is Dries Van Tor. He's woken up now. He's done that banker lap. He's got it on the board. This is the banker lap for Mauro Engel. Won't put him very high up the table, one presumes. Eighth place, there or thereabouts. I mean, uh, far be it for me to observe or criticise a driver, but there is Dries Van Tor now. Watch again, and followed by Christopher Hasse in the 25 of Santa Lock Audi. So Dries van Thor, currently fastest in purple sector one, personal best green sector two. Sector one is his happy hunting ground. That's the part of the circuit, the first third of the circuit that the Audis seem to have the handling that helps them be quickest through there. But uh, further around the circuit, it's harder. But let's see what Dries van Thor can do. The target time, one minute 44.050. And then it almost equaled a short while ago. Uh, Put just three thousandths per second down Costa from repeating that. But Dries Van Tor, look, that number 16 on the left will get smaller. It's got to second place. That is the sort of thing you have to do if you're trying to take a championship. That You might call that a lap of consolidation because that's put the number 32 already provisionally onto the front row of the grid as we look at Ezekiel Perez compact in our favourite livery. Mercedes comes through, turn 16, currently 15th on the grid so let's wait and see if there's a, an improvement might be a small improvement it is a small improvement but it doesn't matter it's an improvement right just want to point out the gap between albert costa who's in the pits at the moment he's only got an advantage of point one three six of a second over Dries van Tor. Dries quite tidy through the first part of this lap but no improvement back it off 10 minutes to play very surprisingly a new reflection on the driver but dominic barman currently sixth quickest pro-arm category lead pro arm category car lead mercedes where is our hero in 88 where well, what has happened to the 88 mercedes can't see it on timing and scoring we've got 19 cars on track where is raffaele marcello oh. is he hanging out or is he hanging out oh he's just come out just as you said that he's just uh 
I'm glad I got he one only right. Half the se- he only needs half the session, you see. <laughs> it doesn't really matter. He's cool, he's calm, he's collected, but the target time, effectively, to take pole, you, you really have to be on the safe side, get into the bomb in 43s. Those are super fast laps. Albert Costa sitting on a second, well, he's got one pole today, he's sitting on a second provisional pole, checking under the splitter yeah, in the front. Has it been an off? Well, I wonder cars up on the axle stuff, up on the jacks anyway, wheels and tyres off, whether they're going to fit another fresh or set of tyres to go out and consolidate their provisional pull position. But a little look under that front splitter, as if Albert might have said, coming through maybe somewhere like turn 7 or 8 or possibly 14 or 15, I did clip, maybe clunk, clump the curbing, check it out, make sure there's no damage that might have had a bearing or an effect on how the aero and the front of the car would work as Raffaele Marcello comes up to complete his, what is his outlap, really? His outlap, but the good thing for him is the fact that half the field and more are sitting in the pit lane at the moment, so the track's a few degrees warmer potentially than it had been, or at least one degree warmer at the start of the session. He's got clear track ahead of him. Best playing surface. Absolutely, I hope. I mean, it looked like he was on a fairly committed outlap to try and get as much tyre temperature as possible. He's got a clear racetrack. Doesn't look like anything is going to have any interference with what Marcello might hope to achieve. As we go back to Rhys Panthor. No, Kevin Van der Linde. Well, Kevin's pardon. improving around this lap. Look, yeah. at the bottom of the screen. That, uh, that could ease him up into third place to put him, put him ahead of the second. Attempto racing car of... Mattia Judy, but also Dries Van Torre. He's got to be aware. Maybe the team would like Dries to qualify just a position in front of Kelvin, but you can always sort that out. But let's see. He goes into third place. He does exactly what the team would have liked him to do. Yeah, so uh, supporting the sister car, the car that has got the championship currently in the grass. Marcello through sector one. Purple! Oh, and he was eating the track and the gravel. That's what we call deep, deep, deep through turn seven and then clipping straight across at turn eight. Target time, 1 minute 44.050. You Let's... don't even have to have a stopwatch no, on the no. screen to see a driver try like that. That is what we enjoy. But not a purple, only a green, nevertheless. That was massive commitment coming through turn nine to let the car float as far out to the exit of the corner as he did into this final and I say more mechanical rather than aerodynamic part of the racetrack and easy here to throw it all away just by overdriving watch the curbing on the inside watch the curbing as you flick back to the right ride the curb on the exit of 15 then make your entry commitment into 16 good exit not overuse of the racetrack where is Raffaele oh he's gone oh, one minute 43 oh, point I mean, did, oh did he what, what did he do I wonder... so he's now fastest by Point one of a second from Albert Costa. Albert still sitting in the pit. So is he breaking the run of poles for the Lamborghinis? But right now he's doing what he needs to do. And his teammate, oh. Timo Bogoslajski, that's a replay. I and wonder, I wonder, will that be looked at? Because he had all four wheels off what I would call the racing surface. And he skated. And I think that could be looked at as being track limit abuse. No, we've just heard uh, mention that it is apparently fine. That is fine because he gets extra marks for trying. And, and I was my, obviously my glass is half empty this morning. Yeah, come on, John, buck it up. I'll have to <laughs> top it up and make it completely. So full. here we are, six minutes remaining. Rafael Marcello on a cooler lap. He's going to pick it up again next time around. But he's on pole by point one of a second point one zero one. If you want to be absolutely specific, the next two cars are, are still within two tenths of a second. The, Second row is Dries Van Toren, his teammate Kelvin van der Linde. Other challengers, Tech One's Audi, sixth place overall, top in Silver Cup class, and Dominic Bauman, seventh overall to be top in Pro-Am. That really yeah, no, is I a mean, good run for SBA. Dominic Bauman had been the quickest Mercedes up until Matt Jello went out. Still waiting to see where we're going to find the number four Mercedes, the HRT. It currently is on the sixth row of the grid. But it's in so the pits at the it's moment, It's in the John. pits, you're correct, it's in the pits. Dries van Thor, by the way, Sector 2 has just gone purple. I don't know what that actually means. It's either a reasonably good run through Sector 1, but doesn't come up in any particular shade other than just a black number. Hugo Chevalier, down in 20th position. Personal best. If you go back to Dries van Thor in that third position, this could see him get provisionally onto the front row of the grid. 
It does. I think it will. Yes, it does indeed. So he's now just eight hundredths of a second down on Rafa Marcello, just north of the one minute 44 second divide. And that lap from Hugo Chevalier will move him probably up to about from 20th to, well, he's only gone up to 19th. Has found some time. Oscar Tunio in the top 10. Really good run he's having in the Silver Cup class from Top Sport WRT. But really, it's all eyes on what two individual to do. Rafa Marcello has brought the 88 Mercedes back into the pit lane. Don't think with four minutes he's going to go out again. His margin is tiny. Eight hundredths of a second over Dries Van Tor. Albert Costa, who had been the man of the morning, really, has now find himself on the second row of the grid. That'll be a huge disappointment. That car we know was in the pit lane. It was up on Jack's looking under the front splitter to see if there was maybe a small amount of damage, maybe a ride over a kerb. As we watch Oscar Tunio, he has... Well, there is the 88. The body language is going back for more. And he's got four minutes. He's got an out lap. He get, might get two flying laps in if he's very lucky. Certainly, he'll get the one absolute certain lap in, depending on how quick he chooses to go on his out lap. Albert Costa now needs to regroup three tenths down in sector one. Is not going to assist that regrouping to get onto the front row of the grid. And he's got the AF Corsa Ferrari running around not too far ahead of him, which isn't really what he wants. It's all right if he catches it and passes it on the straight, but uh, with the clock counting down, three and a half minutes remaining in this session, clear track is what all these drivers are going to need, psychologically as much as anything, if they're really going to hang it out there and go for a time. This lap is not going to assist anything for Albert Costa, provisionally P3, if he had one flying lap and that will be the opportunity he'll start it now and this is where he's going to start doing something a bit special to reclaim that pole position Santalot racing were a bit out of sorts in the first qualifying session this morning but suddenly they reprieve Simon Gachet goes to the top of the Silver Cup class seventh overall getting closer and closer that's good obviously they weren't quite right for the corner track but they've uh, had a little think and uh, certainly for Simon Gachet Silver Cup class leader he goes to the top of that class seventh overall Fred Ravish Currently sixth place, improvement in sector one, fractionally down two tenths of a second, sector two, so he's a net gain of a tenth or so of a second. How much does he need to make? He needs to make certainly, well, even a couple of tenths of a second could make a difference between starting in the third or the fourth row of the grid. Well, two and a half minutes oh, to very go. wide in the exit, sorry, Bruce. No, no, go for it. It's, it's Fred Vavish. Will that move him up Stay the order? Seventh. Bit? Stay seventh, but the one I want to go to, we were talking about number four. Where's Wally? Where is Mauro Engel? down in 14th place at the moment. Well, he's just Slow been... out yes. start to this lap. You know what? I think Mara's got a very good sense of drama. Save it, save it. Check and flag will come out, and then I will deliver the he, time. He will come across start finish line with enough time to do a flying lap. Chris Van Thor well, currently on the front row of the grid alongside Raffaele Marcello, but not showing any signs of improvement. And wait to see whether he chooses to come in or will do as everybody else has done take the opportunity on the final lap to do drag anything he's got left in the ID. Well somebody who's just dragged a lot out of his car, Ezekiel Porris compact, fifth quickest, Mad Panda Motorsports vaulted about 10 places up the order if not more, now topping the Silver Cup class. He's 44.2, he's only three tenths of a second down on the fastest time of all. That's a great run that, for the Argentinian. That, that I think is probably his finest qualifying all year. So on board with Albert Costa, now he's going to go for it. He's got a minute and 15 seconds, he's come across start finish line. This will be his final lap. But while he's doing that, in behind Kelvin van der Linde is in third place, fourth place, but he may go into third. This could cost Costa as well. Here comes 31 down to the chicane for a, what's going to be a fantastic lap. He's got the fastest middle sector of any book. Work on those times, he's really taking a tilt at pole here. This is just trying to get on the front row. I mean, again, look at the exit out of turn 16. Nothing left on the table. Goes on to that provisional front row. So Dries Van Thor has been bumped down at one road. Third quickest alongside Albert Costa, who's out. I don't think Albert Costa's got anything left. And I tell you what, Raffaele Marcello is lighting up the purple lights all around the circuit. Look at that. Four tenths up in the middle sector. I mean, this is absolutely mighty. It's obscene, you might say, the level of attack that he's giving this but uh, for Aka ASP it's been a bit of an up and down season but in this Spanish sunshine it will put a massive smile on their face and for his co-driver Timo Bogoslajski he's ranking third overall in the title race pole position was already there it's one minute 43.296 that is a stellar lap I mean you, you've just seen a, a masterpiece painted 
here on the racetrack at Barcelona. He's 6.675, let's call it two thirds of a second ahead of Kelvin van der Linden. What has Dries van Gogh got left? Well, he's not going to improve on this lap, but he this is his last lane. chance. He's, so he's ranked third. Maybe he feels Albert Costa won't go any faster. Third, not the end of the world. That's, that's but, fine. Bruce, what, what is the end of the world to me is that the HRT Mercedes down on the sixth row of the grid, 11th position. What a disappointment. I don't know what the reasons are, but that is something certainly worthy of a, a pit lane interview when the session finishes. Yeah, so what a story of ups and downs. It looks like it's going the way of Albert Costa. Maybe it's going to be a fifth pole in a row for Lamborghini, but uh, it's like the, the hornet's nest was given a little little shove, and Raffaele Marche came, Marcello came out and took that pole position. But I think hats off, too, to Kelvin Van Linden and Dries Van Torp. They really, really worked those WRT Audis, and uh, Audi really coming good as the track warms up here. Yeah, so, uh, I mean, once we see this is qualifying, of course, for race three, It'll be interesting to see if there are any, not to say team orders, but team strategies wherein, uh, wherever Kevin van der Linde may start the race, will he be ahead of the sister car, the 32 idea of Dries van Thor and Charles Perts, come the end. So that's what teams do. They work as a team. It's not an individual sport. It's not as if maybe in a single-seater race where you are the only driver. And even there, of course, team strategies do come into play as well but right now here is the man of the circuit to catalonia standing six tenths of a second above everybody else and it'll be a laconic cool calm and collected raffaele gets out of the car and says hey a double espresso por favore well if, if he wants an espresso he can have an espresso because that was an astonishing lap to be even two tenths of a second clear on a tricky track this morning, but 0.675 is an extraordinary example of commitment. Great, and I mean, KSP as well, they got the setup right for the car. Bruce, I mean, we've seen some outstanding qualifying laps. Look at that time, 0.675 and an advantage for Rafael and Marcello. Kelvin Van Linden, Dries Van Tor, both firing really well for the WRT Audi team. For Lamborghini, to have to make do with the second row. Albert Costa, a pole and a fourth place. Pretty good collection from this morning's qualifying sessions. But top Silver Cup driver, what a lap from Ezekiel Perez Compact. Fifth fastest for Mad Panda Motorsport. Ahead of the second of the Lamborghinis. And uh, really hats off too for Attempto Racing. Mattia Drudy and Fred Vavich really gave it a shot this morning. Seventh and eighth for this afternoon's race. Simon Gachet, Santelot Racing found their form again. And Aurelian Panis, really a couple of good qualifying sessions in the Silver Cup class in the lone Lexus. Top in Pro-Am was Eddie Cheever down in 12th overall. A real mix, but it's the car in 11 that intrigues us. Luca Stoltz, Mario Engel, championship challengers starting back on row number six. That has made their climb rather steeper for this afternoon's race. But uh, what a morning here at the circuit to Catalunya Barcelona. And uh, for Albert Costa, that first pole, and then Raffaele Marcello. Boy, did he deliver in the second qualifying session, John. Well, I mean, I think it's a privilege for us to sit and commentate on, on a driver who's just blown the field off the racetrack. And, I mean, he makes it... He makes, he's, a, he's a, an exciting racing driver to watch anyway. But he's strung together three purples, three sector purple times, and, you know, just nailed it. And that's what... You know, he'll get out of the car knowing he has done the best he could have done. The team will have known it. And within Raffaele Marcello, it'll be that naturally, like I say, I use the word or phrase laconic. That's how he is. Yeah, but also just fabulous sights here after a, a day of grey cloud and rain. Just fabulous to see the sunshine. Let's see if the sun is shining from Raffaele Marcello down in the pit lane for an interview. Raffaele, a fantastic lap, even as we saw all four wheels off the side kissing the gravel there, just flying. Yeah, it's I think a pity that with uh, in Q3 with the first set I went in the gravel a bit. So maybe without a mistake we were able to save a set for the race. But I mean, it's, it, it was quite quite difficult Q2 with the mixed condition. But to tend to be P2 and P1 is not so bad. And the, the strategy there was very much to stay out, stay, stay in the pits for the first half of the session and then get out towards the end. Yeah, I mean. I already saw with the first one with the Q2 that I wanted to wait a bit long, but we were scared of red flag and stuff. So I think we went a bit too early and we lost the full position because I did one lap earlier than Costa in Q2. So in Q3 I said, I mean, I want to wait uh, like a 10 and yeah, it 
for sure it paid off because the track was getting better and better. It absolutely paid off. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. Bruce, am I mistaken or does Raffaele Marcello look like his hair has grown overnight? I mean, we saw him yesterday and it looked like it was just a fresh, you know, a, on, but it looks, it, I mean, I can't believe it might, it's grown about a quarter of an inch overnight. And I think potentially slightly changed colour. Maybe maybe his hair's going grey. I doubt it. I don't look, think he has those sort that, of emotions. I didn't want to say grey, but it did have that Silver. look of a, a light shade of grey. Well, fabulous conditions. I cannot wait for the two races. The first one kicking off at 10 past 12. But these sessions, highlights galore. The timing sheets were alive with colour. Green means an improvement on your best sector. Purple, fastest of all. And we had people down in way down the order, suddenly setting sector times that just made us stand up and take a look. Oscar Tuncho really flew in the Silver Cup class. He was uh, rock solid early on. Mattia Drudy in number 55. Again, two great qualifying sessions for him, but uh, we had the Lamborghinis swapping provisional pole times in the first of those qualifying sessions, but it was Albert Costa in 163 who came through and grabbed the pole for the second of the race. The third race will be later in the afternoon. 31, Kelvin van der Linde pressing on all the time. Maro Engel up and down the order. And at the end of the day, he didn't qualify well in Q3 at all. Not for want of trying, but if he wanted trying, the man on the move, Raffaele Marcello, second in the first qualifying session and obliterated the opposition to take pole for the third race. Albert Costa kept on fighting, but he's going to end up fourth on the grid for the second of the races. It was that short break in between drivers staying on board the cockpits, waiting, urging the track to go up in temperature while they sat there in that 10 minute break. And then it was all out there to do it all over again. Oscar Tundio continued to push in the Silver Cup class. Kelvin van der Linde fleetingly to the top of the time charts. Then, of course, it got toppled. Albert Costa went top. The times kept on flipping over. But then Raffaele Marcello came out, used all the track and a little bit of the gravel there at turn seven and eight. He went to the top of the charts. At the end, Dries van Tour tried his hardest, had to settle for third place for the championship leader. But today, it was all about Raffaele Marcello, fastest in qualifying.